Mountain to live in small mountain town in the southern end of West Virginia, aka bumpfuck nowhere feet. Banjos. Town is partially dilapidated but lively enough, there's a really nice little residential area and your basics like a Dollar General, doctor, mental health place, Walgreens, some gas stations, etc. Town is far from its prime but it's cute as shit, reminds me of the town in Dandy's Peak geographically. Anyway. Live almost on top of the mountain in a very quiet part of town. Stupid ass pseudo intellectual tarot card reading fat bitch of a neighbor that thinks she knows the inner workings of human consciousness because she smoke spot and took a semester of psychology. I dismiss most of what she has to say all the time because she's absolutely full of shit 99% of the time. One time she told us that a daemon inhabits an abandoned house literally about 30 yards away from my own, and that it is known to knock on your door at night to ask for shit or something I don't fucking know. Sounds retarded but alright bitch. Months go by, neighbor has since moved forget about her silly story she probably made up for attention. One night around 1 a.m. my girlfriend and I hear a distinct knocking either coming from the front door or within my man cave. Weird as fuck because the neighborhood is incredibly quiet and devoid of hoodlums and crime so someone knocking on the door at this hour is literally out of the question. Girlfriend is a little spooked but I tell her it was probably the cats which we had three of and the bastards make noise all night. Thing is though, when I shot up out of bed the cats were all visibly spooked and running away, and they never do that when friends or family members knock. Never hear it again and never see anything. Did some research and apparently there were some drug-related murders throughout the towns hit, again, West Virginia anon. In a town called Weston there is a now defunct asylum that functioned until I believe 94, it's called the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum, or TALA for short. Serious shit happened here in the years of its operation. Lobotomies, brutal murders, tuberculosis deaths, you name it. It was your typical 1800s to 1900s shitty fucking haunted hospital type of deal. Pick related is the actual asylum. This doesn't do it justice either. It is absolutely fucking huge. Like a goddamn castle. They regularly hold overnight tours in this place year-round and my girlfriend, her friend, and two buddies of mine did one November 2020. We get there at 8 p.m. and are to stay and tour until 6 a.m. the following morning. The guide splits us up into two groups because there's lots of people there. Group 1 gets floors 1 and 2 for the first few hours while group 2 got floors 3 and 4, would rotate around the halfway mark. First experience was on the very top floor, 4th, and it was just my girlfriend and I all alone at the dead ass end of the hallway, which was no joke probably 50 yards long or better. Again this fucking place is enormous. We just got done trying to contact I think his name was Timmy. A former patient who was very childlike and reacted to prompts you would tell a child. People left him toys and snacks and shit all the time in his room. We try to get something out of him and don't hear anything so then we step out in the hallway. Clearly see the group of three to five people up there with us leave way at the other end of the hall. We see their flashlights trail out so we are confirmed alone up there. Spooky as fuck JPEG. We just sit in the hallway and listen and watch. The guide said sitting in a single area for long periods of time is a good way to experience something. Few minutes go by and we start hearing rustling slash creaking literally everywhere around us. Literally some noises are right beside me, others are down the hall, others are across the hall, and this all began happening at once. Not a windy night either so that's not to blame. And I know I just said this was a huge old building so things are gonna creak and crack but we went from complete and total dead silence to small noises all around us without warning. Probably legitimately ghosts.png. Next part happens in a different location and is to this day the most legitimate spooky experience I've ever had. Zach Baggins and his ghost show were literally here at this location at some point, pick related. 
there is a room on the very bottom floor of the facility, which was where Civil War soldiers rest and ate at the time, I think the place was used as a makeshift base or something at some point. Anyway apparently this is a very active spot, and the room we were in, Zack actually marked on the floor with tape in the shape of an X where he felt the most spooked. Me and my dumbass buds and my girlfriend and her friend of course want to experience this. We put a chair atop this X and just see how long we can sit there. The chair is facing away from a very, very dark and spooky room that is mostly wrecked and just overall fucking creepy looking. This paired with overall occasion and atmosphere could have easily led to our anxiousness and sensations but nonetheless we experienced them. I lasted about three seconds sitting in the chair as the sense of anxiety and dread was absolutely overwhelming, and I am not an anxious person and never have been. Buddy 1 says something touched him, Buddy 2 sat there for about a minute but was very freaked out and refused to sit there again and he is not one to fuck around like that. Buddy 1 sits back down in the chair for like 3 to 4 minutes like a champ and sits his phone down on the floor to record, we're asking dumbass ghost show questions like give us a sign if you're here and all that corny shit. At one point we hear a loud clang in the room near where my GF's friend is standing, which she's leaning against a big old metal sink. But this was a clang, not some creak from her leaning. Spooked. Wav. We continue the recording and eventually wrap up and listen to it. At one point in the video, a very clear and identifiable sharp exhale is heard very very close to the phone, which was lying on the floor. My buddy was sitting above it but he's in a chair of normal height so his head is probably 4 feet from the phone. I assure you none of us got down on all fucking fours and breathed into the goddamn phone. Yet here we are, with a clearly audible breath recorded. Nothing happened to any of us but the experiences were totally legitimate. At one point we had split up and my girlfriend and her friends said they very audibly heard a metal chair scoot across the room they just left, which was of course empty. At another point my girlfriend had one of those radio boxes the ghost hunters use, I forget what they call them, the guide supplied us with these tools, it was really neat. But she had it in a room where the token little ghost girl was said to communicate with guests and as she was cycling through the radio stations she hears a hello? That she claims sounded entirely different than all the other obvious radio frequencies she was picking up. Unfortunately I didn't hear that but she was entirely convinced. Come to the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in Weston, West Virginia sometime anons. You get to stay in a legitimately haunted historical monument overnight for $100 and do whatever the fuck you want.